everybody. It's Carla Riv from Happy Life Food Forest. Um, pretty excited because I finally got a bigger than four to six inch uh, pineapple guava. Now, because we're so cheap, <laughs> we did find this for a really good price. And it is, you can see, it is this high on me. The problem is we got to take really good care of it because we bought it from somebody who probably bought it at a super discounted price from somebody else because they had had it forever. It is so root bound, the pot is busting. <laughs> but we can bring this back to life and have a huge uh, pineapple guava to start with. Maybe the pot just busted because it's an old, old pot. But we'll see when we get this open. Now you may wonder, it's going to go right here where our poor little calamandine froze to death. Um, yeah, I know. Bless its heart. But the first thing we have to do is I know people sometimes wonder, what is that plastic on your fence? Well, the plastic on our fence is clear shower curtains. And we do it all the way down because every now and then our neighbors like to spray. And we would just, just in case, like to make sure that we keep all of our plants and keep our land from being contaminated. So, we do this every year. So we have to get that done first, and then we will um, take this out and check this root situation out and see where we go from there. Check out all the blooms that are just popping out on this pomegranate. Okay, wait, let's see the whole plant. That's a hole, and that's the plant. We want the whole plant. W-H-O-L. <laughs> Yikes. Um, okay. Solid as a rock. <laughs> uh -huh. My first plant oh, is a good plant. Bless very its good. little heart. My first plant is a very, very good plant. How long are we going to let that soak? Five minutes and 33 seconds. You don't have a watch on. <laughs> see what I got to live with. Also see what I got to live with. <laughs> Works both ways. All right, in this soil we put garden soil, little some of blood the soil meal, from some here. Bone, bone meal, native soil that came from here. Mm -hmm. We're going to add a little azomite, and on the roots, we're going to give it special love. Okay, so this guy can either grow the feijoa, probably not saying it right, or the pineapple guava, can either grow as an erect tree-like plant, which this one only has two main branches coming out, so it'll be more erect and taller, or you can have it growing wide as a bush. The leaves will turn bluer when it's healthier different times of the year, but they have a bluish cast. You can tell, well, it's kind of dead. <laughs> that one doesn't count. <laughs> so, these guys are very wind sensitive, so we're going to have to give it some kind of support to prevent it from being blown over, because it has a shallow root system. Um, but the perks are it's drought tolerant. It is cold tolerant. It 
down to 15 degrees, 14 degrees Fahrenheit, I believe 14 degrees Fahrenheit. And it is salt tolerant, which if you're living in a coastal area with a lot of salt, that's a good thing for you. Um, but it's a cool little plant. Uh, it'll give you, it'll start blooming April to May, give you these really pretty and edible flowers. And uh, the fruits are edible. They stop dro start dropping probably September, October. And you, when they're ripe, they drop onto the ground and that's when you pick them up and eat them. So, let's get into checking out this root system. I think our five minutes and 33 seconds is over. <laughs> oh, bless its little heart. Just got to break this up or it is not going to spread out and grow well. Until some of the roots have started turning upwards. Now to get this out of here, yeah, see this guy is coming up. It's important to get these roots spread out. Now you can use a high intensity hose to get some of this because it looks like they just grew it in cheap. Top soil. Mm -hmm. There's no soil. It's all root. A little bit of soil coming out, but it's all root. But you just keep working at it and working at it. I think we need to soak the whole thing in a. Yeah. Okay. That little bit of a soak was not enough. We're going to soak the whole thing in this wheelbarrow. Now this makes a very ornamental hedge that will actually also give you fruit and edible flowers. Now because we do want a little higher tree-like form, we are going to cut off and we are disturbing its roots which mm -hmm. God knows how long it's been in that pot. But we are going to cut off this small branch that comes out. And then on the other side is another small branch. Now if it wants to root out and make more from that point, that's fine with us. This is a non-invasive species, so we're not at all worried about it making a bunch of babies all over the yard. But I think if we cut these two smaller branches off, since we are disturbing the roots so much, it'll be a healthier plant. You want to be the honor? No, go ahead and cut this one. And then when we roll it over, it'll fit flatter in the wheelbarrow. Maybe. All right, that's gonna give it a nice form. We're gonna keep these cuttings. I might can get another one for the other lot. They grow pretty well from cuttings, is my understanding, but I will update you on that if these grow. This is so compact. I mean, for a plant that's supposed to have a spreading it's just going to have to soak for a little bit. We may have to get a... Cut. We may have to cut through the root system to get it to open up. Mm -hmm. It's still hard as a rock. We're just going to try to get it to open up some on the sides here. Poor baby. Alright, 
let's roll it over. Whoops. Oh, this one's coming loose a little yeah. easier. That's, I've been working on that side. More. Yeah. Oh, there's a nice root. We do not want to cut that one. See, there's a good baby. It's not all these little tendrils. Okay. We got that one, one of the little main roots left. And we got that one, and this one. All right, we're getting somewhere. Now what we're gonna do, since it's been so deprived for so long, we're gonna give it a lot of nutrients, like we've already added blood meal and bone meal to the soil. We're gonna add a little bit of azomite to the soil. And, we are going to add mycorrhiza directly to the roots so that they can uptake nutrients. Okay, so we keep soaking this. We keep scraping off this layer right here as hard as a rock. Now, believe it or not, our olives were in worse shape than this. But do you see these little green pellets? They just keep fertilizing this to keep it alive and that made that top layer hard as a rock but we've scraped off enough of this top layer that we're starting to get because the water would not go through it at all before it was hard as a rock um, and the water just went around it so we're getting more of this solid top layer off and we're exposing the little roots it was, looks like it was planted in a ton of uh, topsoil. I don't know how long ago. <laughs> Ten years ago. <laughs> I don't know. They are very slow growing. I'm assuming at some point it got repotted into here. We like to separate them a little at a time. But a power nozzle would work as well. Okay, after we've got it opened up some up here. We've exposed a lot of the top roots that were just under a layer of all this topsoil and sphagnum moss. And these guys will spread laterally through the yard. So we got most of this hard stuff on the top off. It's been a long journey. And we got it opened up in here so that these roots can now spread out laterally and got a lot of that peat moss, sphagnum moss, topsoil mixture that they planted it in gone. All right, looking pretty good. It can now get some nutrients, get spread out. Um, we need to get some uh, of my mycorrhiza to put in here and we'll get it planted. Okay, in our soil mixture, I'm gonna put a little bit of, I'm gonna add probably a quarter of a cup of azomite into the soil mixture. We already have um, garden soil, native soil, uh, a little bit of compost and blood meal. We had about a quarter cup of blood meal, a quarter cup of bone meal, and I'm gonna add about a quarter cup of azomite to the mixture. 
a little at a time as he's adding the soil because it hadn't been pre-mixed in there. Oops, sorry, don't mean to sprinkle you. And then we're going to put this guy in there, press him into the roots. I'm going to put azomite around it and on top for it to soak in. About another quarter cup. Almost. And this mycorrhiza mycos, pure mycorrhiza organic root enhancer. We're going to put that on the roots and it helps it to uptake nutrients. And this poor baby needs all the help it can get. All right, we're going to sprinkle this all on the roots. And this mycorrhiza, these organisms, turn it some more, please, are going to work synergistically with it. And a little bit over there and help it to uptake new nutrients <laughs> dollar weed roots this whole side of our yard is covered in dollar weeds What? There is soil behind you. Oh. Okay. Okay, little baby. You're going to have new life. And we're going to work the rest of this quarter cup of azomite into the top. Alright, we're going to water it in. And it is as tall as our four foot fence, so it's a nice top four foot bush <laughs> I'm covered in peat moss and <laughs> and bark that was in topsoil so um, <laughs> I have to clean my camera when we're done with this <laughs> and I appreciate you guys putting up with the noise our neighbors are putting in their first garden ever And hopefully he'll be so happy with his new home that he won't go into shock. But he's pretty big. But I remember when we planted our olive trees, they never went into shock. Oh, there goes a hole. So, need more dirt. Water it in to make sure you don't have any holes, any air around the roots. And usually we have it pressed in pretty good, but not with this one. Not this time. That's okay. There's a lot of root for it to fill in with dirt. And we'll do this again every day for at least the next three days. to make sure it's getting plenty of dirt around the roots. There's no air in there. Water right on top. We scraped as much as we could off of there. 
right on top of it, but where we need it well draining is circular motion all the way around it. And this is like eight to 10 inches of mulch to help protect the roots once they start growing out. And it's draining around the edges. So we're gonna watch it for a couple of days see how it does at this point we're not going to trim off branches because we trimmed off two major branches down there and when we purchased this this was in the pre-trimmed pile so we're gonna check it out we're gonna see how it does in a in a couple of days in a few days all right it is two and a half days later and this baby looks fantastic. Now, I have pulled off, except for this one, about 20 leaves that I think that's just burned from the cold. But if there were leaves that looked particularly bad like this, I went ahead and pulled those off. So make that 21 leaves now. And I sprayed it with neem oil because, as stressed as it was, it's a prime target for pests. And if it had pests, I've got enough of my own, thank you very much. So I went ahead and sprayed it with neem oil and some bonide. A very dilute solution of bonide copper spray and it's gorgeous so rescue those babies you <laughs> start big for really cheap I was gonna have to pay $20 for plus ship with the shipping for a four to six inch tall one and now I have a four foot tall one that I might, I paid $50 for, but I'll have fruit this coming year. So I'm super happy and I feel like I got a good deal. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope y'all have a great day and I hope you plant what makes you happy. Um, I'm truly looking forward to eating some pineapple guava. So y'all have a wonderful day. Bye.